Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to come together in here and learn the word of truth that is given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace, not through uh, by grace through faith, not through works, lest anyone should boast and give him freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if you do not obey him and is made manifest or made obvious that you do not believe. In this state, you should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that you do give, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that you may have, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. So, we got a lot to cover, but we are finally out of the old testament we will be beginning the new testament today um so last week we talked about nehemiah and we talked a lot about how nehemiah um was was stressed right he was he was stressed about getting the people back together right so he was stressed about kind of getting the land back in a, in a decent state remember our people although we're back in our land at this point our people are still dealing with oppression, right? We still dealing with just mentally, we're subservient to another people, right? It's not like we are, it's not like we have our own king over us like we had before, right? It's not like we had this prophet that can like kind of lead us th throughout the way, right? We in a position where it's all types of people that have all this jurisdiction over us and they get to kind of tell us what to do. They charge us taxes. We got to pay them taxes. You know what I'm saying? A lot of our people are poor because we don't get to run our own stuff, right? Our economy is not, our economy is not, we all coming from captivity, which is going to be poverty because we lost everything. Then we get out of that captivity and we end up coming home, but we don't have the economy at home to generate income, to generate money. So our people not doing well. We have to, we have to, you know, mortgage off our houses and sell our stuff and take out loans just to pay taxes. That's the condition of our people at this point, right? So it's important to realize when Nehemiah is coming in, he's trying to get things back together as much as he could. He built up the walls for us. Then he started making covenants. And he said, look, we're going to make a covenant that we're not even going to, we're not going to give none of our children to the Gentiles, right? We're not going to marry none of the Gentiles, right? As a covenant to the Most High God, now, that wasn't our law, but that's the covenant that he made. And the covenant was the intention was, let's not let anybody lead us astray, right? The likelihood that you get, we saw what happened to King Solomon, right? King Solomon got with a, a bunch of women. Some of them were forbidden, but some of them, it's lawful for him to have married them, right? It wasn't against the law for him to marry some of them women. Nevertheless, right, when he did marry them, he had so many and they started him, they started to, 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 you know, pull him away. Right. And as he pulled him away, he started building altars for these other guys and doing all types of other stuff. Right. So we, somebody like Nehemiah who know the law, right. Know our history. He looking at it like, man, look, we not going to give our sons, our daughters to none of these Gentiles. And he made a covenant to the most high God. Right. Then he also said, close the gates. Matter of fact, if the Gentiles even come to the gate selling stuff, I'm going to put my hands on them. And he threatened the Gentiles. So the Gentiles stopped coming to the gate. Right? So what Nehemiah started to do is to start to put barriers in place to, not, to, to keep us from even getting close to breaking the law. Right? That's going to be important when we start to read. Because from the time that we read in Nehemiah, uh, Nehemiah about 400 plus, you know, I think it's like 400 plus years pass, right? And as the time passes and we get 400, 400 years later, now we get the story of Yahushua that begins, right? It begins technically with John the Baptist, right? And we're going to kind of get into that. But there's a lot that happens in between that, right? There's just a lot, just not, not even just a lot with our people specifically, but there's a ton of stuff that happened in history right so like if you take it the king the, the empire that ruled the world when we was reading nehemiah were the persians right so that's like 
Think about uh, think about the movie 300. Right. It's the Persians that was running the show at that point. Then you fast forward a little bit. Guess who ends up taking over? The Greeks. Right. Specifically Macedonia. So they end up taking over and they start to run stuff. And the Persians were respectful. Alexander right. You can even Great. see what's that? Alexander the Great. Mm hmm. The Persians was a little bit more respectful. Right. You can see when we reading, we send that we send notification to the king like this. That another a lot of these Persian kings, they gave respect to our God. They look like, yeah, no, we'll fund it. Let them build their house. It ain't like they only serve our God. They serve all these guys, but they gave respect to our God specifically. Maybe they were giving respect to a lot of guys, but they also gave respect to our God. It was different. Things changed a little bit with the Greeks, right? The Greeks didn't give respect. So during this time that we ain't really got a lot of scripture, you do got the Maccabees, the book of Maccabees. And the whole book of Maccabees is talking about how they warn with the Greeks. You know what I'm saying? The Greeks in there being foul, disrespectful, right? Because, because, so Alex, the, the brother mentioned Alexander the Great. Alexander the Great, all right, go uh, grab, grab Daniel chapter 11. So before we get into the New Testament, let's set the stage. In Daniel chapter 11, all this was prophesied, right? So Daniel, he made a prayer and the Most High God sent him an angel he talked about all of it. He predicted the whole thing. What actually happened in history, he predicted it. That's why it's crazy for these people to say that book ain't real. Let's take a look at it. This is, uh, this is Daniel chapter 11. Give me verse 1. We're just going to read through it. This is Daniel chapter 11, verse 1. Also in the first year of Darius the Mede, when I stood to confirm and to strengthen him. And now I will show thee the truth. Behold, there shall stand up yet three kings in Persia, and the fourth shall be far richer than they all. By his strength through his riches, he shall stir up all against the realm of Grecia. And a mighty king shall stand up that shall rule with great dominion. And do according to his will. And when he shall stand up, his kingdom shall be broken. And he shall be divided toward the four winds of heaven. And not to his prosperity, pros posterity, nor according to his dominion, which he ruled. For his kingdom shall be plucked up even for others beside those. And right? So what, what this prophecy is talking about, that's talking about Alexander the Great. Right? That's talking about what history knows as Alexander the Great. He took over the Persians. So it said, hey, look, it's going to be a couple Persian kings. And that's what we've been reading about. From the time of Daniel to the what we just uh, read in Nehemiah, there had been a few Persian kings, right? And then now he's telling you, okay, but then after that, another king going to pop up, right? And he going to rule this thing. That's Alexander the Great because he took over stuff quick, right? Alexander the Great is Greece. So then Greece creates a whole empire through him. But then he dies suddenly. He died pretty young. I think he was only like 30 something. So he didn't have a grown kid. He, uh, he I think he might have had a young kid or he didn't have no kid or they wasn't sure it was his kid. It was some type of drama with his kid or something like that, if I'm if I remember right. But he didn't have a kid to hang it down to, hand it, hand it down to. Right. Nobody that he felt or that anybody felt it was appropriate to hand it down to. So instead, his kingdom got split up to his generals. Right. Watch what it say. It was four of them. And the king of the south shall be strong, and one of his princes, and he shall be strong above him, and have dominion, and his dominion shall be a great dominion. And in the end of years they shall join themselves together, for the king's daughter of the south shall come to the king of the north to make an agreement. But she shall not... Right? So now you have a, one of... So that it got split into four, right? But then you got two kings specifically. And it's saying king of the south and king of the north. One of his one of his uh, one of the people that took over his empire, they split it in different territories. So one of them took over like Egypt. Right. And, you know, Egypt is right below us. 
right? I don't know if I got enough time to put a little quick little map up here. Let me see. Let me see if I can put a little quick little map so we can kind of get a visual of what it looked like. Let me see here. Mm. Just gonna do a quick little Google Earth, you know what I mean? For y'all on the on the camera. Oh, that's not the right one. Right, so you had the king of the south that has this area right here. You know what I'm saying? So this little area right here, this would be the king of the south. He got this, right? And then we right here in Israel, right? This is our land right here in the middle. So then you got the king of the north that got Syria and all this stuff up here, right? So king of the south right here, king of the north right here, and they warring against each other. So where do you think they meet at? Right here in our land. So uh, sometimes we were taken over by the king of the south and they had rule. Because remember, when we walk into this, it's the same position we was in with Nehemiah. Right. When we walk into this thing, we got to pay tribute to the Persian king. Well, now Alexander the Great takes over the Persian king. We got to pay tribute to Alexander the Great. Then he died. His kingdom gets split up. So now they fighting over territory of, oh, OK, I'm the king of the south. He don't call himself the king of the south. That's what the prophecy call him. But I'm a king of the south. I want this territory. No, I want this territory. I want all this territory. So they fighting with each other over this territory. But a lot of the wars of these Greeks is happening right on top of our land. So the, the, the king of the south ends, I mean, king of the north ends up getting a lot of the territory and we subservient to him, paying taxes to him. But he's disrespectful. You know what I'm saying? He ain't got like, he don't even care. So it's all types of stuff that the book of Maccabees talk about. It talk about how they, uh, how he, uh, he came in. And he put us in a position to where uh, we he made they made us sacrifice, you know what I'm saying? Sacrifice a uh, uh, a pig on our altar, right? On the Most High God's altar, they sacrificed the pig. And then a little bit after that, they you know what I'm saying? They put uh, a a uh, a statue of Zeus in our stuff, right? So in our temple, the Most High God temple that we had rebuilt, you know what I'm saying? Years years before. You know what I'm saying? We spent all that time rebuilding. Remember, we set the, we laid the foundation with, uh, in the book of Ezra, we laid the foundation with, uh, with, uh, Joshua and, uh, Zerubbabel. You know what I'm saying? And then we kept on getting stopped. Y'all remember the Gentiles kept stopping us from building it. You know what I'm saying? Then we finally, you know what I'm saying? Got to, got approval to build it. Then it took forever to actually build it. And then years and years later, we finally get this thing done. And then Nehemiah come years later. Ezra come years later, you know what I'm saying? And they try to get the land together. So we go through all this stuff. We back in the land. We finally got stuff together. Things looking okay. We still trying to get some money. We still poor. It's solid, but we here. Then these people start warring, right? Then they start disrespecting our temple, the temple of our God. What do you think that caused? That causes us to revolt, right? So that's where the Maccabees got their name from. Is one dude called Judah. You know what I'm saying? His name is Judah, Judah Macca, uh, Judah Maccabea. You know what I'm saying? And and he he uh Maccabea mean hammer. You know what I'm saying? So that was a bad boy. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I like to imagine a big old buff Negro, just like you know what I'm saying, like what's going on? You know what I'm saying? I ain't standing for this stuff no more. They ain't gonna disrespect our God no more. So he set up a whole army and he started fighting with these boys on both sides. You know what I'm saying? And he was actually winning. But after a while, they had to come and they shut this stuff down. So it's in that time. You got all types of political stuff happening. You got high priests, people, they they working. You got some people that want to be like the Greeks in our people, right? Some of our people are just like, look, why fight these people? Like, it just let's just go along with it. We was under Babylon. Some of us kind of adopted some of the Babylonian stuff. Let's just adopt some of the Greek stuff. It'll be easier for us that way. So you had them talking these people into saying, look, Let's just elect our high priest. You know what I'm saying? So they was holding elections for our high priest. Uh, completely against our law. Some of these high priests wasn't even like, like the Maccabeans. 
some of these high priests weren't even of the of the Levites, let alone the sons of Aaron. Right. So they were making like people from Benjamin. You know what I'm saying? Benjamite was a was a high priest. They were making all types of people high priests. So they were going crazy for a little bit. And during that time, that's how you got the Sadducees and the Pharisees that started to, to, to develop. Right. It's during the time period right before. Right. Right before what we about to read is right where the Sadducees and the, and the Pharisees started to develop because we got a chance to kill all these folks or not kill them all, but to back them off. Then the Romans took over. Right. So we was fighting wars with with the, the king of the north and the king of the south. And then the Romans took over. Once the Romans took over, then they was a little more political with us. They were looking like, no, 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 no. Look, look, look. Let's make, let's to stop all the wars, let these people do what they want to do. So it was a part of like a bigger agreement, what they call a treaty, when you kind of signed the agreement. So it's all these wars. It wasn't just wars in our land. It was all types of wars going on between, between the king of the south and the king of the north. You know what I'm saying? So they signed a treaty when Rome got involved. And then it was kind of like a little, little bit of peace. Rome started to, you know what I'm saying? They took over and Rome started to run things a little bit differently. But Rome appointed uh, kings over us that weren't of our people. That's how you get King Herod, who we about to read about, right? King Herod married one of the daughters of the Maccabees. You know what I'm saying? And so he married one of their daughters. He was actually an Edomite. Right. He ended up wearing one of their daughters. And then that supposedly gave him the rule, gave him the right to rule over us. Right. And then things kind of go, you know, wherever they go from there. But that's how you get Sadducees. That's how you get Pharisees. They come from different perspectives. But the point was, we finally got control of our land. These people are not trying to kill us day and night. And we they had to they had to tear down the altar that that was used. They had to cleanse out. So that's where Hanukkah, you ever heard of Hanukkah? That's where that come from. It's the Feast of Dedication because they had to rededicate the temple because it had got, it had got defiled because they, they sacrificed a pig in that thing and they put Zeus in there. You know what I'm saying? So there's a whole bunch of stuff written about how, how the Feast of Dedication came about. But that is our people, right? Hanukkah is not like a lot of people, a lot of Hebrews, they look at the Hanukkah like, no, nah, that's that Jewish stuff. You know what I'm saying? That's what the white Jews do. Like, no, that's not how that, no, nah, that was our people, right? That was stuff that we went through that's our day. You know what I'm saying? That's that's just like Purim. It's just something that wasn't in the in, in the scripture. It's not law from the Most High God, but it's like Purim. It's something that our people went through and we decided let's memorialize it. Right. So then after that, you know what I'm saying? After they rededicated things, they had to build a new altar and they had to build, I think, a new lamp. It was a couple of things that they built that that it was a uh, it was a uh, uh, defiled. They had to rebuild it, remake it. You know what I'm saying? So they could have it in the temple. So that's the state of our people, right? We finally kind of getting back to our law. We got the high priest back together. We're not just anybody going to become a high priest. And you got the Sadducees and the Pharisees, different perspectives in some, some ways, but they are, they are there to kind of guard and like, no, we need to get this thing right, right? They don't agree on everything, but their perspective is we not letting nothing get messed up. We need to get this right. But I need y'all to understand that is the perspective of our people, right? The attitude of our people right now is we were um, captive to the Babylonians, just got back into the land. Y'all saw how timid we was when we was in the land. Like, man, they might try. We had people that didn't even want to live in Jerusalem just because they looking like, man, if 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 the Persians start, if they decide that they want to kind of kick us out of here, they're going to start at Jerusalem. They look like, man, we'll live outside the city. They had to cast lots in Nehemiah to figure out who was going to live inside the city. Right. So our people were timid. We looking like, man, we don't feel security. Then imagine after that, they start sacrificing pigs in our temple. Right. Because you, you imagine after that, you got people, you got people trying to like join up with the with the Greeks against our people our own people trying to join the greeks against us so the the level of security is not there we kind of feel like if anything happened we we can lose everything we have if we make the wrong move if we make the wrong empire mad we can lose everything we have because it's happened to us before 
And when you have that backdrop, when you understand that, you can see why what we're about to read in the New Testament, you're going to be able to see why they act like that, right? Why they think like that. Why the high priest during the time of Yahushua had the vision that he had, right? He had a vision of, look, it's better that we let Yahushua die than for people to believe he's actually the Messiah and we lose our entire nation. That anxiety that he had comes from something. This is it comes from a real place, right? When we read through what we're about to read through, I don't want y'all to just look at those evil Pharisees and those evil uh, Sadducees. I want y'all to think, why do they feel that way? Right? Why would they make those mistakes? Why wouldn't they believe him? Right? Y'all willing, we're going to look at the, the gospel different than we ever looked at it before as we go through it all together. Let's pick it up and let's go to, uh, this is Luke chapter 1, verse 5. This is Luke chapter 1, verse 5. First thing we got to read about is John the Baptist. There was in those there were in the days of Herod, the king of Judah, a certain priest named Zechariah of the right. Boy. So now that's Herod. Right. So remember, Herod is he's the king of Judah, but he is not of our people. He is not a he's not a man from Judah. You know what I'm saying? He's an Edomite. Right. So he's a brother of our people. Right. But he's not of our people. So he works. He's put in place by the Romans. He works with the Romans. He's subservient to the Romans because the Romans conquered the, Edom, the Edomites too, right? So he, he's like a part of the Roman Empire at this point, and he works on their behalf. But he is not of our people, but he is considered the king of Judah, right? Keep going. A certain priest named Zechariah of the course of Abiah and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name mm -hmm. was Elizabeth. Right, so now... His wife is a daughter of Aaron and he's a priest, which makes him a son of Aaron. So both of them are of the same lineage. Right. He's a priest that married a wife, his wife, that was also not just a Levite, but a specific type of Levite, a daughter of Aaron. Right. Keep going. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of Yahuwah, blameless. And did what? And they what did had... And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of Yahuwah blameless. Blameless, the book says. Right? It's important. It's one of the things that I like to take people to because a lot of people had this, this, this messed up idea from Christianity that it's impossible to keep the law. Right? That's not true. They had the sacrifices and the law was in place and they were in the land. In that state, you can keep the law. Now, what's impossible is to keep the law without flaw, right? Without sin. But you can absolutely commit a sin that doesn't require you to die and go make a sacrifice, make the sin right, whether it's a trespass, right? If, it, if it's a trespass, then you got to restore a fifth to that thing, right? If I betray somebody, that's what a trespass is. It's like I betrayed you, I tricked you, I lied to you, I injured. Like somebody else is involved. That's when the when our law calls it a trespass. You know what I'm saying? A trespass is a different type of sin. It's a sin, but it's a different type of sin. It means that you sinned against somebody. Right? Versus just a, a, a different type of sin. Right? So it's like if it's a trespass, you know what I'm saying? I might have betrayed somebody. I might have, you know what I'm saying, tricked somebody. I might have did whatever, stole from somebody. Then I got to restore that. I got to make a sin offering. And then I would be blameless according to the law after I've done that. Right. So that's what that's what that's what he he and his wife were both blameless according to the law. Right. His his her husband is a priest. And he doing his course. Right. Keep going. They had no child because Elizabeth was barren and they both were now well stricken in years. 
In other mm-hmm. words, they both some old butts. And she ain't never had a kid. She feel like she couldn't have no kid. They call her barren. In other words, she's not able to have children. And at this point, she's old. So she's too old. She passed the age of women having children anyway. Right? Keep going. It came to pass that while he executed the priest's office before God in the order of his course, according to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was... Right? So he, he's into. doing it in the order of his course according to the, the custom of the priest's office, right? Because remember, David set up the court. So what we going to go, we going to look at this stuff because we read all this stuff, right? But a lot of, some of this stuff we didn't spend a lot of time on when we read it throughout the, the law. We made it, remember, we started from Genesis. Anybody that, that, that's that been around the whole time, we started from Genesis and we made it all the way up to this point, right? So I'm going to take y'all back and I want to make sure y'all reminded of certain stuff. These things are little details that's important to understand the context of what's happening, right? He's on his course, right? So this is this is what what uh, grab uh, grab uh, Second Chronicles, grab Second Chronicles chapter eight, verse twelve. It's Second Chronicles, chapter uh, chapter eight, verse twelve. Then Solomon offered burnt offerings unto Yahuwah on the altar of Yahuwah, which he had built before the porch, even after a certain rate every day, according to the commandment of Moses on the Sabbaths, and on the new moons, and on the solemn feasts, three times in a year, even in the feast of unleavened bread, and in the feast of weeks, and in the feast of tabernacles. So this is right after uh, Solomon set up the temple, right? And he making offerings, right? Keep going. And he appointed according to the order of David, his father, the courses of the priests to their service, the Levites to their charges to praise and minister before the priests as the duty of every day required. The porters also by their courses at every gate for so had David, the man of God commanded. Right. So David commanded the the priest to have courses and solomon set it up in that way just like david commanded it so when it says he was doing his when it's talking about zachariah the priest he's doing a course so what that means is it's different priests right different sons of aaron are able to be the priest it's different sons that are able to act as priests during different times so you might have it for uh Go back. Let's see what let's see what uh course he had. This is uh go back to uh Luke. What verse we leave off on? Luke chapter one, verse what? Uh verse nine. It's Luke chapter one, verse nine. And it came to pass that while he executed the priest's office before God in the order of his course, according to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. Keep going. And the whole multitude of people were praying without at the time of incense. Mm -hmm. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. Right. So he's inside of the temple. He's burning incense. Right. And as he's burning the incense, the angel of Yahuwah appeared to him. Right? Watch this. And when Zechariah saw him, he was troubled, and fear and fear fell upon him. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zechariah, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear a son, and you shall call his name John. Thou shalt have joy and gladness, and may shall, and many shall rejoice at his birth, for he shall be great in the sight of Yahuwah, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. And he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. Right. So now you have a son named John that's on the, on the way. Right. Zachariah just doing this. Look, you got to imagine Zachariah. I mean, I've been doing this for years. I've been a priest since I was 30 years old. Been doing this for years, going back and forth. And what I do, got the same routine. I go into the temple. I light the lamp. You know what I'm saying? I burn my incense. Been doing it every day. 
during his courses every single day, same routine, he do it, right? And then suddenly the day he go in and he see an angel. And this man probably 80 some years old. He probably 60 some years old. Who knows, right? But he see a, he see the angel of the most high God right there, right? And then the angel look at him like, oh no, don't be scared. Cause he's scared. He's looking like, oh man, what this mean? Right? And the angel like, no, don't be scared. Most high God heard your prayer. You know what I'm saying? And because of that, he answered it. So you got a son on the way. You know what I'm saying? When he get here, just call him John. Imagine this angel just talking to him casually. You know what I'm saying? When he get here, you're going to call him John. He's going to be a mighty man with Yahuwah. Right? So now what you expect Zachariah to see? Say, let's see. Many of the children of Israel shall he turn to Yahuwah, their God, and he shall go before him in the spirit and the power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers of the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for Yahuwah. And Zechariah said unto the angel, how shall I know this? Right. He's saying, how a... shall I know this? Right. Why would he ask that question? Let's see. For I am an old man and my wife well stricken in years. He looking like we can't have no kids. So he's asking them, how shall I know this? In other words, you got to show me a sign. This is too unbelievable is what he's saying. You're going to have to show me, give me something so that I can know this is real. Is what he said to the angel. And watch the angel say, watch what the angel say. The angel answered. Remember we talked about, I don't know if some of y'all, I don't remember who asked the question, but y'all remember we talked about, um, we talked about uh, King, uh, uh, I want to say King Abijah, but I don't think it was Abijah. Um, but it was one of the kings of Judah, right? And it was right, it was right after uh Israel, you know what I'm saying? Right, maybe right before Israel got exiled, right? The northern kingdom got exiled. And remember, he had a question. He said, you know what I'm saying? The most high God said, Ask of me a sign. And he was like, No, nah, man, I ain't gonna ask of you no sign. You know what I'm saying? I ain't going to ask for you no sign. And the Most High God said, well, you should have asked for one. But because you didn't, now this is what's going to happen. Right? And he ended up trying to trying to call, you know what I'm saying, trying to call the Assyrians on the, on the uh, northern tribe. And the Assyrian came down and got his butt and the northern tribe. Right? These are the things that, these are the things that, that, that sometimes it, you look in the book, you look like, well, I don't know which one to do. He thought it was right not to ask for the sign. The most high God told him to ask for one. And then you have Gideon on the other hand that was clear like, look, give me a sign. Show me a sign. So now we say, okay, Gideon said, show me a sign. That worked out for him. Abijah, I think it was Abijah. Maybe it wasn't Abijah. But the king of Judah said, no, don't, I don't, I'm not even going to tempt you and ask you for a sign. It didn't work out for him. Most high God offered it to him, though. And now... You have Zechariah who says to the angel, you got to show me something now. You know what I'm saying? What you going to show me to make sure, you know what I'm saying? Show me some money. Show me how do I know this is real? And watch how the angel respond to him. And the angel answering said unto him, I am Gabriel that stand in the presence of God and am sent to speak unto thee and to show thee these glad tidings. And behold, you shall be dumb and not able to speak until the day that these things shall be performed, because you believe not my words, which shall be fulfilled in their season. Right. So he made it to where he's not able to speak. Right. Similar to what he did to who? Uh, Ezekiel. Right. Remember the prophet Ezekiel. He told him, look, you're going to prophesy my word. But. Until I give you word, now you're not able to speak. So the only time Ezekiel can speak is when the Most High God put his word in him. So now with Zechariah, he told him, now you can't speak. You know what I'm saying? Since you didn't believe what I told you, now you can't speak. Now, you might see that as a punishment. Right? Some people might look at that and be like, dang, God punished him. Right? But did he punish him or did he give him a sign? Right. He asked the question, how show me some. How am I going to know that this is real? How do I know this is true? Most of God said, OK, I'll show you. Don't say a word until this thing play out there. Right. 
And that's where he left it. So now he's looking like, you know what I'm saying? I I can I can I can't speak now, but that was a miracle. You know what I'm saying? So now I believe this thing is real. Now watch what happened next. Keep going. And the people waited for Zechariah and marveled that he tarried so long in the temple. And when he came out, he could not speak unto them. And they perceived that he had seen a vision in the temple, for he beckoned unto them and remained speechless. And right, called, when they say beckon, that means he tell them. You know what I'm saying? He like, he doing signs to him, trying to like get him to understand what he's trying to say. Like, no, I was lighting the thing. You know what I'm saying? I was trying to light it. And then all of a sudden, big old angel came on, shining all types. Of, I couldn't even see. You know what I'm saying? So he's trying to like, like beckon to him to, to understand. They looking like they could tell from what he was doing. There's like, oh, my man must have saw a vision in there. And so, and so my wife said, that's, how, that's why black people talk with their hands, right? We probably always been doing it. So we are looking at him like, Oh, oh no, he saw a vision in there, right? Keep going, watch this. And when he came out, he could not speak unto them, and they perceived that he seen a vision in the temple, for he beckoned unto them and remained speechless. And it came to pass that as soon as the days of his ministration were accomplished, he departed to his own house. And after those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived and hid herself five months, saying, Thus has Yahuwah dealt with me in the days wherein he looked on me take away my reproach among men right she said to take away my reproach among men remember in ancient times our women like the glory of a woman was to bring forth a child a child specifically a man child right bring forth a male right that was the glory of a woman. It's like oh yeah let me just get a little boy that might you know what i'm saying that might be able to you know what i'm saying change the world or have some glory right that was the glory of her to produce a nation Right nowadays, you got these women that just—I mean, just the the mindset is so different, right? We look at these kids as like, you know, what I'm saying, like, oh, you know, what I'm saying, that's just a like. We look at the kids as holding us back, you know, what I'm saying. But that wasn't the mindset of our women. A woman felt reproached if she couldn't have children, right? You give, you give, you give, uh, and reproach is talking about, you know, what I'm saying, like cursed, you know, what I'm saying, if she couldn't have children. But then you give her one child, you give her a son. And she's looking like, okay, you give her a daughter and she's looking like, I'm going to raise a daughter that's going to give birth to the great nation. Like that, that's, that's how, if I have a daughter, then I want her to give birth to a nation, to be a mother of a nation. That was a glory for our women. So you got to imagine how she feel. She, she has already accepted in her life that I'm never going to have children. But you know what? I got a loving husband. I'm a daughter of Aaron. We just going to, we just going to coast through this thing. I'm still going to stay righteous because the book said they were both righteous. Right. And then she ended up being told, OK, well, you got a baby on the way. He praised the most high God. She said, oh, he took away this reproach from me. Right. He took it away from me. He put me in a position where now finally I can win. Right. I can win. So the Gabriel, I mean, the, the Gabriel, the, the, uh, the name of the, uh, the angel that was speaking to him, his name was Gabriel, according to what we just saw. Right. When was the first time we heard of Gabriel? Right, yeah, Daniel. With Daniel, yeah. Yeah, the prophecy with Daniel. Check out, go back to Daniel chapter 9. You remember we was reading the prayer? Remember, remember, remember uh, uh, when we was in the book of Daniel? We had, it's probably a couple months ago, right? We was talking about Daniel's prayer, and we kind of broke down his prayer, and we looked at the order of prayer, and we were looking like, oh, yeah, Daniel put together a nice prayer. He structured it in a nice way that we can model our, our own prayers off of, right? At the end of that prayer that we were, pardon me, at the end of that prayer that we were reading, that's when Gabriel came and talked to him, right? This is Daniel chapter 9. Give me verse 20. This is Daniel chapter 9, verse 20. In the first year of Darius, the son of Ahasuerus, of the seed of the Medes, which was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans, in the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by books the number of years whereof the word of Yahuwah came to Jeremiah the prophet, that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolation. What verse is that? Uh, two. Jump on down to verse 20. 
Oh, my bad. You did say it to him. <laughs> you good. And whilst I was speaking and praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel and presenting my supplication before Yahuwah, my God, mm -hmm. for the for the holy mountain of my God, yea, whilst I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel, whom I seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me about the time of the evening oblation. Right. Now watch what Gabriel say to him. And he informed me and talked with me and said, oh, Daniel, I am now come forth to give thee skill and understanding. At the beginning of thy supplications, the commandment came forth, and I am come to show thee, for thou art greatly beloved. Therefore, understand the matter and consider the vision. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to the restore to restore and build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the prince, shall be so seven weeks. The Messiah, the prince. Shall so be when Gabriel came to talk to Daniel, guess who he is talking about? He was talking about the Messiah. Right? Then years later, probably 800 years later, uh, maybe not 800. You know what I'm saying? But probably 500 years later. Right. Then the same Gabriel come talk to uh, to Zachariah and his wife, Zachariah and Elizabeth. Right. And they talking to him about John the Baptist. But John the Baptist's role is to roll out the red carpet for the Messiah, the prince. Right. So Gabriel, when, when Gabriel talking, he telling you something about the Messiah. Right. Jump back over. Where where we leave off? Right. Huh? Uh, Luke one twenty five. It's Luke chapter one verse twenty five. Watch the book say. Right. So at this point, Elizabeth is pregnant. She knows she's pregnant. Right. Now Gabriel got to talk to somebody else. Let's see. Uh, Luke one twenty six. This is Luke chapter 1, verse 26. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. The angel came in unto her and said, And she's hey. a what? And the angel came in unto her and said, hey. No, 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 no. Before that. Uh, and the virgin's name was Mary. Right? And she... She she's a virgin one, and then she was a spouse to who? Joseph. So when you say a spouse, that means that they yeah. had they they committed to marry each other, but they haven't actually married, right? So they promised to one another. They they engaged as 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 we would call it today, right? So they're engaged with one another. They are spouse to one another, but the books say they haven't come together yet, right? Read it again. In a six month angel. Oh, wait, in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph to the of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. Uh huh. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored. Yahuwah is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And she saw him. She was troubled at his saying and cast her mind on what manner of salutation this should be. The angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary. Thou, right, so she thou. looked when she saw the angel talking to her. She she looked like she knew she was it was the angel. So at that point, she looked like, oh, I don't know what type of news this is about to be. You know what I'm saying? She looked like, I don't know if this means I'm about to die. I don't know if this is about to be good news, bad news. So the angel, I tell her, like, oh, don't be scared. You know what I'm saying? Fear not. It's all right. It's gonna be good. That's what you tell her. It's gonna be all right. Watch what you tell her next. I just want to. I want y'all to see the conversation. Because there's a lot of weird old people that, that think weird stuff. They just think stuff that just don't make no darn sense. But when you read the book for yourself, it's a lot of people that have spent all day on, on, on online and, and in Bible studies and in these little Bible groups and these camps that argue whether or not Yahushua was born of a virgin. Right? They'll, they'll literally argue this even though the books say he was a virgin. But they'll go and they'll be like, well, no, nah, see, the word virgin 
Actually, you know what I'm saying? It just means a young word. I'm a young woman. It can actually be translated as made. It's like, no, that's true, brother. It can be translated as made. But it literally says virgin. Right? But that's okay. There are language issues in the book. Let's see if the 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 this whole thing makes sense. You know what I'm saying? Let's just see. Keep going. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, you shall conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Yahushua. He shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. And Yahuwah God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. He shall reign over the house of Jacob forever and his kingdom. There shall be no end. Then right. So now he's quoting different prophecies to hint to her that your son is going to be the Messiah. Right. So when Mary hear this, what's the first thing that you think she about to say? She's a virgin. Watch what she say. Then said Mary unto the angel, how shall this be, seeing I know not a man? Right? She's looking like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, how is that even possible? I've never been with a man. How is what you're saying possible when I've never been with a man? Why would she say, why would this be her response if she knew she was humping on uh, Joseph this whole time? Because that's what they try to make you think. These, these little... Ugh, these darn Israelites get on my darn nerves, right? They will have you thinking that she been humping on her, her spouse, soon to be husband, this whole time he got her pregnant. So now she, she fronting to the angel, looking like, oh, I ain't never been with a man trying to keep it low. That make more sense to them than just taking it exactly as written, oh, she's a virgin, and she's telling you She's never been with a man. That's why this is unbelievable. It was unbelievable to Zechariah because he was old. He said, he gave his reason. He said, oh, I can't believe that. Right? I can't believe that because I'm old and my wife is stricken in age. You got to show me something to make this real. Right? If you know that virgin can also be, be translated as young maid, right? A virgin is always talking about a young lady, right? So let's just say it's talking about a young lady here. Why would this be unbelievable to a young lady? She ain't well stricken in age. She ain't got no reason to feel like she's she's uh, barren. The only thing that, that, that would make this unbelievable to her is, I don't know, I've never been with a man. You know what I'm saying? Like, I've never been with anybody. That's why this is unbelievable. Let's see what he say, though. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold. So now watch what the angel's response. She says, I've never been with a man. He don't say, oh, well, no, don't worry about it. I know you ain't slept with Joseph yet, but you, you and him about to get it on soon. He don't say that. You know what he says instead? Oh, I know that sounds crazy, but. The Holy Spirit is about to come over you, right? And you will become pregnant. He's describing how it's going to happen. He said it's going to happen through a miracle, through the spirit of the most high God. He don't say nothing about Joseph. Right? Keep going. And if, honestly, I always thought of it as if God could make a human being from the dust, surely he can make one from a woman who already has the reproductive organs. You know what I'm saying? Surely he can like, you know what I mean? Like that's light work. Yeah. You know that? Like it's crazy. That's light work. The half of the job already done. <laughs> right, right. You know what I'm saying? That's light work. Right? But I don't even think they have a, a issue with the possibility of it happening. They have an issue with just reading the text and accepting it what it is. Right? They we get so hung up on trying to prove Christians wrong about everything. And it's like, who cares? If a Christian is right about something that they cling on to. That's crazy to want to that you would prefer to be wrong about something than to let a Christian be right. That's nuts to me. Of course, these Christian going to get some stuff right. They reading from our book. Keep going, though. What verse we on? Uh, 
36. This is Luke chapter 1, verse 36. Watch this. Keep going. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For God, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of Yahuwah, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Right? So after that, the angel went off and he went somewhere else. Right? So she looking at, she's not dealing with a, a whole lot of unbelief. He gave her a sign still, though. He said, listen, go check out your cousin. Her name is Elizabeth. Right? And Elizabeth, you know what I mean? She pregnant in her old age. I know that's unbelievable because her butt old. <laughs> right? And Mary was like, oh, if that's the case, you know what I'm saying? Let it be just like you say to your handmaid. In other words, she said to your servant. Right? The same way you said it, let it be just like that. Right? Oh, we got jump over to uh Matthew chapter one. This Matthew chapter one. Give me verse 18. Now, the birth of Yahushua was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph before they came together. Before born, what? Before they came together. It's telling you, right? It's saying before they came, while she was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, what else happened? She was found with child of the Holy Ghost. So that means she was with child before. Her and Joseph start humping on each other. Right? Keep going. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing. Look, hold to on. Him being, look, look. Before they got together, right? Before they start humping on each other, then she was found with a child. When Joseph found out him being a just man, a righteous man, what did he decide to do? And not willing to make a public make her a public example was mi mi minded to put her away privately. Right in his mind, being a just man, he said, "Man, I'm just gonna handle this privately. I ain't even gonna I ain't even gonna make a public example of her. I ain't about to embarrass her out in the streets. I'm, you know, what I'm saying I'm just gonna I'm just gonna put her away. I can't deal with it now. But clearly, look, he looking at it like clearly I didn't sleep with her, and she pregnant. He looking like." I'm not putting up with that. I thought I would get me a virgin. I could have her but stoned right now. According to our law, he could have her but stoned. But being a just man, he said, I'm just going to put her away privately. You know what I'm saying? I'm just going to give her a bill of divorcement and we just going to call it quits. She go her way. She have her little baby with whoever she cheated on me with. It's fine. I'm going to move on and I'm going to find me a true virgin and I'm going to marry her. He was, he was done with the whole situation. Heart probably broke. Like, I can't believe she married. She over here telling me it's this, that, and the other. You know what I'm saying? I can't believe this is what's going on. Right? But being a just man, he wasn't going to get her stoned. Being a just man, he is just going to put her away privately and let her do what he do. Now, I want y'all to think about it from the Hebrew Israelite mindset. Right? The Hebrew Israelite going to tell you that it wasn't a virgin birth. Right? And that Yahushua was actually the son of Joseph. Right. That's what they're going to tell you. Right. So then if you take it that way, let's play out the same scenario in our heads. If that's the case. Mary and Joseph is sneaking around, humping on each other. Mary is lying to the angel like I ain't never even been with no man. Right. And then Joseph, knowing that he humping on her, got her pregnant, found out that she's pregnant and being a just man, he going to put her away because he don't want to got her pregnant. He going to divorce his soon to be wife because he's the one who got her pregnant. That's a just man. That's something that a just man would do. You people sound crazy. You just don't read the book. It's saying it to you flat out. It ain't even confusing. It's the look. It's some stuff we go back and forth on the book. That's uh, it's like, oh, that's tough to prove. You know what I'm saying? Maybe it's a little gray. Ain't no gray. I don't even know what y'all talking about. What's the argument about? The argument is they don't know our law.
If they knew the law, they'd know why he was being a just man. Grab uh, Deuteronomy chapter 22. Let's see why he's being a just man. Let's see what his options are. This Deuteronomy chapter 22. According to our law, he got options how he can handle this situation. He can handle it one way or another way. This Deuteronomy chapter 22. Give me verse 13. Matter of fact, before we do that, give me verse, uh, give me chapter 24, verse 1. The Deuteronomy chapter 24, verse 1. Then after that, we're going to 22, chapter uh, verse 13. Yeah, brother J. Mike said that's quite the drama. Yeah, no, Joseph was hurt. You know what I'm saying? Joseph was hurt. He walking in. This my baby. Look, this my baby. He looking. We got three more months. And it's my, it's probably three more months, and we supposed to seal this deal. Joseph probably ain't never had none in his life. And he waiting for it. Like, oh, this is about to be so good. Oh, yeah, it's about to be a good night. Right? He looking at his wife, his, his soon-to-be wife. Beautiful. He love her. They've been getting to know each other. Everything smooth. He got all types of plans. He working hard. Get everything right for her. Smooth. He didn't already pay her daddy. Everything smooth. He's ready for this. All of a sudden, she come in talking about, okay, I have something to tell you. He's like, what is it, baby? It's going to be hard to believe, so just sit down. No, nah, baby, you know everything good. I got to get back to work. What's going on? I'm pregnant. You what? No, I'm pregnant. Hear me out. I saw an angel. And Elizabeth pregnant, too. You and Elizabeth out here? Elizabeth cheated on Zachariah? No, she didn't cheat on him. She pregnant by Zachariah. So you cheated on me because you ain't pregnant by me? No, I'm pregnant by the Holy Spirit. What in the world is you talking about, woman? And he looking at it like, I just need some time. Just give me. And then he walk out and he looking like, you know what? I ain't even going to do her like that. I'm mad, but I ain't even going to do her like that. I ain't even know. So these are the options that he's weighing in his brain when he walk out the house. And he's storming back and forth in front of the little thing. He looking like, man, I don't even know, bro. This thing messed up. He's scared to tell his homeboy because it's embarrassing. So he's sitting there like just walking back and forth. Just like, man, I don't even know. And then he considering these because he know our law. He considering these two options. This is uh, this Deuteronomy chapter 24, verse 1. When a man has taken a wife and married her, and it come to pass that she find no favor in his eyes because he has found some uncleanness in her to let him write a bill of divorcement and give it in her hand and send her out of his house. Right. So he's like, on one hand, I can just go to her. Cause I, I, she don't please me no more. Cause she pregnant and I ain't never been with her. I thought I was getting a virgin. I thought I was about to marry a virgin, but clearly she ain't a virgin. She probably been humping on me around, uh, humping on around me this whole time. And now she pregnant by some who know, I don't know. Right. I don't even know who it might be. Let me just write her a bill of divorcement and I'm just going to send her away. That's clean. Nobody got to die. He can send her away. She can go do whatever she want to do at that point, right? But then he got another option, right? This Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 13. This Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 13. Watch what the book say. If any man take a wife and go in unto her and hate her and give her occasions of speech against her to bring up an evil name upon her and say, I took this woman and when I came to her, I found her not a maid. Then. Right. I found her not a what? Maid. So they write. Right. They write that that virgin. Sometimes it's translated as young maid. Sometimes it ain't translated as virgin virgin. That, that's, that's what the white folks put in there. That was the that was the translators put in there. You know what I'm saying? You never know. That wasn't no, that, you know what I'm saying? She wasn't a bird. So the book right here in the law saying, I found her not a maid. What do you think they talking about? Found her not a virgin. Y'all trying to play these language games. It don't matter what type of language you use. The book still going to be right. He came in there. He said, look, man, I didn't find her a virgin. Right? What are his eyes? What can he do now? Then shall the father of the damsel and her mother take and bring forth the tokens of the damsel's virginity unto the elders of the city in the gate. Right? So now, he's looking like, what I could do, 
right? Because I found the wife that I'm a spouse to, right? The woman that I'm a spouse to, the woman that I'm about to marry, I found that she's not a virgin. I could make her family try to prove that she's a virgin, which is going to be hard to do when her belly is six months right now. And I ain't never been with the girl. Right? Because her family then would have to do this. Keep going. And the damsel's father shall say unto the elders, I give my daughter unto this man to wife, and he hates her. And look, he has given occasions of speech against her, saying, I found not thy daughter a maid. Yet these are the tokens of my daughter's virginity. Right? And so her father would then have to prove that she is a virgin and that he took her virginity. Right? Which her father would not be able to do because Joseph haven't laid with the woman. So his Joseph option is, I could embarrass you right now. I could take it, but it's not just embarrassment. Keep going. Watch this. And they shall spread the cloth before the elders of the city. And the elders of that city shall take that man and chastise him. And they shall immerse him in a hundred shekels of silver and give them unto the father of the damsel, because he has brought up an evil name upon a virgin of Israel. And she shall be his wife, and he may not put her away all his days. But if this thing be true, and the tokens of virginity be not found for the damsel, then they shall bring out the damsel to the door of the father's house. The men of her city shall stone her with stones that she die, because she has wrought folly in Israel to play the whore in her father's house. So shall thou put evil away from among you. Right? So now she could be stoned to death if the tokens of virginity couldn't be proven. So Sister Pamela is asking, you're like, wait, 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 wait. Are they married? She asked. Right? And it's like, yeah, the, the other sister said, yeah, no, I believe they betrothed at this point. Right? So she's looking like, how can you divorce them if y'all not married yet? These are his options, right? If he doesn't change anything, guess what? They still on for their marriage. But when they finish consummating the marriage, these are his options. He could always say, she is unclean. She's been with somebody. Bill of divorcement. Simple. Right? Or I can just say, no, nah, stone her butt because she's been sleeping around on me. Those are the things that Joseph has the power to do because this is soon to be his wife. Right? So go back to Luke. Where we leave off? Uh, oh no, go back to Matthew, Matthew, right? We is on Matthew. Matthew this is Matthew one, chapter 1. Matthew 1, 19. This is Matthew chapter 1, verse 19. Watch what the book says. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make a public example, was minded to put her away privately. Mm -hmm. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of Yahuwah appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife. For that was right so now the angel had to he had to, he had to pop over and, and talk to joe like yo 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 why don't you relax don't worry about it what she telling you is true right watch this keep going for that which is conceived in her is of the holy ghost and she shall bring forth a son and you shall call his name yahushua for he shall save his people from their sins now all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of yahuwah by the prophet saying behold a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called And did what now? And knew her not. Till she had brought forth her, her firstborn son and he called his name Yahushua. So I'm trying to figure out what are we even talking about? If the book, if she, if, if, if Mary tell you out of her own mouth, I've never been with a man. If Joseph, if the book tell you, it's a very clearly before they came together. If Joseph is a just man and willing to put her away privately. And then it tells you that they still never knew each other. Until after 
he had the baby. What in the world is the conversation about? I don't even see why there's an argument. This woman was a virgin. This was a miracle to happen. And now Joseph saw an angel that confirmed that miracle to him. And he says, oh, we are part of something special. This is something special that's about to happen right now. And that's exactly what it is, right? These are all regular people, right? They had this vision of the angel, but that's a moment that they have. And go, guess what? After that, they go back to regular life, right? Look at how Mary celebrate what's going on. Go back to chapter uh, uh, Luke chapter 1. Or did we finish Luke 1? Oh, no, give me Luke 2. Give me Luke chapter 2, verse 1. This is Luke chapter 2, verse 1. Watch this. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. Wait. You want what Mary was talking about or you want just Luke 2? No, Luke 2, just in the interest of time. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judah, into the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house of the lineage of David. Right. So remember, uh, Mary and uh, Mary and Joseph are up north. Right. They in an area called Galilee and they live in a city called Nazareth. Right. So they way up north. This is very far away from uh, Jerusalem, right? But uh, Joseph is a son of Judah. He's, he's, he's a son of David, right? So he's actually from Jerusalem. So the law was that, that the Romans had, the law that the Romans had was when it's time to tax everybody, right? Everybody has to go to their city. So Joseph had to go to Judah. So this is how Yahushua ends up being born in Judah. It's important to know that because that's why the confusion is like, wait a minute, where is he from? Because all the prophecy tells you that the Messiah is going to come from Judah. Right. So this is how this is how the most High God set it up to get Joseph back to Judah so that he could have a baby. So the taxes came right when uh, Mary was about to give birth. Right. Watch this. Keep going. It's just crazy how y'all set everything up. Right. Keep going. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judah, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house of the lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. She brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the end. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of Yahuwah came upon them, and the glory of Yahuwah shone round about them. They were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born, the, uh, born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is the Messiah. The Messiah. Uh, the master and this shall be a sign unto you ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling cloths lying in a manger and suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising god saying glory to god in the highest on earth and peace goodwill towards men right so these shepherds saw this and they having this vision of these angels and then a whole heavenly host of angels came and they all praising yahuwah so these shepherds are looking like what so, of course, they about to do what the angels say and go see about it, right? Like the Messiah is born? Are you kidding me? Remember, Mary and Joseph went to their regular life after that angel. Like, they know something special happened. But just imagine, like, you had this moment and everything just regular again. 
So you got your same routine every day. You waking up for work, you fixing dinner, you doing everything. It's just the same routine every single day. And then, oh, it's tax time. Same routine. Okay, every year for tax time, we got to go down to Jerusalem. You know what I'm saying? So he go down, go down to Jerusalem, same routine. Oh, you about to have a baby. Then they have a baby. Pop, wise men hear about it. Now watch what happens next. You just got to put yourself in Mary and Joseph. It's like, oh, we forgot this is the Messiah. You know what I'm saying? Like, we forgot this is a special kid. Right? Keep going. Watch this. And it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which Yahuwah had made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard them, heard it, wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all the things and pondered them in her heart. Right. In other words, when Mary, Mary's just kind of watching this stuff, holding her baby and everybody trying to grab her baby and pray over him and, and touch him and all that stuff. And Mary just kind of looking at it and looking like, this is special. Right. This is special because remember, the glory of our women was to give birth to a nation, to a great man. And she gave birth to the Messiah, like the one that's going he's going to be the king of kings. He's going to be the one that saves and delivers Israel from all other nations. Right. So she's just sitting back, just taking it in like, oh, they already starting to worship my boy. Right. Keep going. Watch this. What verse we on? 21. 21. This is Luke chapter 1, verse 21. Keep going. Watch this. Wait, uh, 20. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, and it was told to them, as it was told to them. And when the eight days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child, his name was called Yahushua, which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. Right? So y'all remember... We just read in uh, Leviticus that on the eighth day, the child had to be circumcised. Then after that, the woman has her days of uh, impurity, right? She had to accomplish the days of impurity. So watch how they keep the law, right? Keep going. And when the days of her purification, according to the law of Moses, were accomplished, they brought him into Jerusalem to present him to Yahuwah. As it is written in the law of Yahuwah, every male that opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. Right. So remember, we just got done talking about uh, what we read in Leviticus or what we just read in Leviticus, where the firstborn had to be dedicated to Yahuwah. Right. It's mentioned in Numbers, too. Right. But the firstborn had to be dedicated in Yahuwah, uh, get dedicated to Yahuwah, according to um, uh, Exodus 12 and Exodus 13. Right. When we made it out of Egypt and, and, and the Most High God took all the firstborn children out of Egypt, all the firstborn males out of Egypt. Right. So Yahushua being her firstborn. Right. She had to dedicate him. So she took him to the, t the temple after her uh, purification, after the days of her purification was accomplished. Keep going. And to offer a sacrifice according to that, which is said in the law of Yahuwah, a pair of two turtle doves or two. Young oh, wait, hold on. Sister Pamela says 66 days. Right. That's going to be on the test when we when we uh, when I finish that test. That's going to be on the test, but no, not 66 days oh, that was for, for, a, for a male child is 33 yeah, days. Daughters. But how many days before that? Right before that, there's a there's a time of purification before that time even starts. I think it's 20 Who days. remembers it? Right, I believe it's 14 days. 14 days, yeah. Right, so I think Leviticus says 14 days, then after that, if it's a male, 33. 33 days. If it's a, a female child, then 66 days. All right, keep going. And to offer a sacrifice according to that which is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of dirt turtle doves or two young pigeons. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. The Holy Ghost was upon him, and it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen Yahuwah's Messiah. And right? So at this point, the baby is about, you know what I'm saying, almost two months. Right? Baby is a month and a half. And then you got Simeon, or, or older, he could be older, 
right? And then Simeon, you know what I'm saying, he's a devout man. And so he's looking like, uh, you know what I'm saying, Most High God, you promised me that you would let me see before I die, you would let me see the Messiah. So the, the spirit is going to take him to the temple. Watch this. And he came by the spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the, brought in the child Yahushua to do for him after the custom of the law, then took he him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Yahuwah, now let us, my, let us thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For my eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. Simeon blessed them and said unto Mary his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall and rising again of many in Israel and for a sign which shall be spoken again. Yea, a, word, a sword shall pierce through thine own soul also, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. And there was one Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Penuel of the tribe of Asher. She was of the tribe of what? Asher. So you can see that it wasn't just uh, uh, descendants of Judah and descendants of Benjamin and descendants of Levites that were in Judah, right? This is someone from the tribe of Asher. She was also in Judah, right? Keep going. She was of great age and had lived with a husband seven years from her virginity. And she was a widow of about 84 years, which departed not from the temple, but served God with fastings and prayers night and day. And she coming in that instant gave thanks likewise unto Yahuwah and spake of him to all them that looked for redemption in Jerusalem. And when they had performed all things according to the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own city, Nazareth. And the child grew and waxed um, and waxed. Yeah. Right. Go to um hold what you got there. What what verse is that? 38, 30, 39? 40. 40. That's 40. Grab um, let's go to Matthew chapter 2. Right? Because Matthew is gonna tell you some other stuff that was happening at the same time. This is Matthew chapter 2, verse 1. So I just want y'all to see their experience, right? They had his baby, right? that all these people was coming to see him. We're going to see more people that came to see him from Matthew's account, right? But you got these, these shepherds that came to see him and the shepherds saw a vision. So everybody excited. Everybody looking like, oh, this the one. They noticed the one, right? A lot of times people would try to paint it like Yahushua with this nobody and nobody knew who he was. That's not true, right? That's not true. The, since he was a kid, there are certain people that knew this is the Messiah. And they following him already since he was a kid. Right? Now, a lot of them died. Anna, she ended up dying. Simeon, he ended up dying. The shepherds, we don't know about that, right? And then you're about to have what we're about to read here in chapter 2 of Matthew. It's Matthew chapter 2, verse 1. Now, when Yahushua was born in Bethlehem of Judah in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east of Jerusalem, saying, Where is he? that is born king of the Jews. For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. When Herod Right, so they came from the east. Wherever they came from, it was east. So they came from somewhere over here. You know what I'm saying? Jerusalem, Jerusalem probably, they say Jerusalem right here, but Jerusalem in real life is probably somewhere down here. Who knows, right? But they came from somewhere over here. You know what I'm saying? So these boy came from the east and they came looking for him. They looking like, where's this, uh, where's the Messiah? You know what I'm saying? We saw the star and it's telling us. So it was some great thing in the sky that led them here. Like, no, nah, he got to be here. They following the, the astrology and stuff. They looking like he got to be here. The star say he going to be here. Watch this. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where the Messiah should be born. Right. They, so Herod, these guys, he they came from the east. And the first person they're going to talk to is the king of the city, right? Hey, the Messiah, you, I'm, I don't know if you know, but the Messiah is born according to the star. So the star, look, the star say he should be born right now. We need to find him. So Herod looking like, I don't know nothing about this Messiah, right? Where is he? Because Herod know the Messiah is supposed to take over. 
Which means what for Herod? He's out of there. You no longer king. And the king of Rome is probably looking at you like, how'd you let this happen? Right? So Herod looking like, what? So he called all the chief priests and the scribes and he made it. He said, listen, y'all search the book and tell me how to find this Messiah if he's really born. Right? And watch what they say. And they said unto him in Bethlehem of Judah, for thus it is written by the prophet, and thou Bethlehem in the land of Judah art not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, Right? So then... They looked and they looked through the scriptures and they told them, oh, no, nah, Messiah going to be born out of Bethlehem in Judah. Right. That's the city of David. That's where he going to be born. Right. Who else was born in Bethlehem? David. Was David born in Bethlehem? Mm, I don't Bethlehem. think David was born in Bethlehem. He might have been, though. I don't, I don't remember that. But other than David, who else? We read about it for everybody who read, you know what I'm saying, reading in Genesis. Y'all remember Benjamin? Right? That's right. Right? Ben Ami. Right? You remember Benjamin? Right? You remember uh you remember Rachel? She was uh she was pregnant and she ended up dying during the birth, and they was in Bethlehem. Right? And and then she ended up dying. She named her Ben Ami. And then, uh, you know what I'm saying, uh, Jacob changed his name to Benjamin, son of my right hand. Right? All of it testified of Yahushua. Right? So now, they looking for him. Herod is looking like, where is he supposed to be born? Because he's trying to beat them to the punch and kill the baby. Watch this. Keep going. Then Herod, when he had privately called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and search diligently for the young child. And when you have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. Right. Oh. So he's lying to him like, yeah, I just want to, you know, what I'm saying worship him because that's the Messiah. Right. OK, well, you go find him and then bring word to me so I can go down there and pay homage. You know what I'm saying? Watch what happened, though. When they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding, exceedingly great joy. And when they were coming to the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasuries, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. Right? So the Most High God appeared to him and was like, no, no, no. Don't you take your butt back to Herod. Go somewhere else. So, so they departed another way. Keep going. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of Yahuwah appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother and flee to Egypt, to be thou there until I bring thee word again. And Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed into Egypt and was there until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of by Yahuwah, by the prophet, saying, out of Egypt, I have called my son. Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceedingly angry and sent forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem. And in all, all right, so he was call, upset. Herod was mad. He was looking like. Why in the world didn't these wise men come back? I told them to go find the Messiah and come back to me. But they never came back. So he thought they were playing with him. And so he was like, okay, I'm going to show everybody then. So he went in and he started killing the, the children of Israel, right? The little boys, right? Watch, what, watch which ones he killed. And in all the coast there are from two years old and under, according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken of by Jeremiah the prophet saying, in Ramah, were there a voice heard, lamentation and weeping in great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children, and would not be comforted because they are not. But when Herod was dead, behold, an angel of Yahuwah appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother and go into the land of Israel, for they are dead which sought the young child's life. And he arose and took the young child and his mother and came into the land of Israel. But when he heard that 
Archelaus did reign in Judah in the room of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. Notwithstanding being warned of God in a dream, he turned aside into the parts of Galilee. And they and he turned where? Into the parts of Galilee. So he went down into Egypt, hid out there. When Herod died, then he left Egypt and he went on to Galilee. He didn't go back to Judah. He went back to Galilee, his hometown. So I want y'all to understand he was in Judah, not his hometown. All these people came to see him. You got the shepherds. You got Simeon. You had Anna. You had the uh, wise men who followed the star. And the sister she had, she looked like, so don't this prove that astrology is connected to our people, right? Hold what we got. Grab uh, Genesis. We want to Genesis chapter one. Give me a uh, verse. Uh, I don't know what verse. What I want. The 13, 14. It's Genesis chapter one, verse 14, maybe. Right. But you got all these different people that came to see him. Right. Everybody, when they see him, they worshiping him. They saying all these kind things about him. Right. And and the whole time, Mary is just sitting back and just taking it all in and keeping it internal to herself. Like, man, I got a great boy coming. Like this boy about to be great. They already worshiping my boy. Like, man, this is a blessing. Right. But you got the wise men that came and they followed the star. Right. And the star came from the east, but it set right up in the middle of the sky. And they looking at it like, oh, so and they just following. And they look straight up. They looking like the boy must be born right here. Right. If the, if the star resting right here, the boy must be here right now. So they just followed the star in the sky until it was right above them. And then they looking like this must be the house right here. And they found it. And then they worshiped them, too. You know what I'm saying? And they gave gifts. Right. They looked in all their treasures and start giving them gifts. Right. So now let's look at let's look at what y'all uh, what y'all put in the sky for us. This is uh, Genesis chapter one, probably verse 14. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. Let, let them, them be, be for what? Signs and for seasons and for days and years. For signs. For seasons. Seasons means appointed time. Right. And for days and for years. Absolutely, the most high God uses the stars for signs for us, right? And not just our people, but for a whole lot of other stuff. Our problem is a lot of time people look at that and they try to get prophecy or they try to get imagery or they try to get wisdom from the signs rather than y'all telling you when you see this sign, let it confirm what I've already told you, right? Now, we don't know the backstory of these wise men. But clearly, Yah spoke to them before they went back to Herod. He told them, he was like, yo, 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 don't go back. Don't, don't go that way. These are, these are prophets. These are people that hear from the Most High God. Right? These not just like, these not just like some, some men that's reading Zodiac signs or nothing like that. Right? These are men that hear from the Most High God. So, yes, the Most High God has, throughout Scripture, put signs in the sky for to confirm something is the case for us. And they were using this star to confirm the Messiah. So that's why they went there. Right? Let's go back. What verse we leave off on? 22. 22. This is Matthew chapter 2, verse 22. Watch what the book say. But when he heard that Archelaus did reign in Judah in the room of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. Notwithstanding being warned of God in a dream, he turned aside into the parts of Galilee and he came and dwelt in the city called Nazareth that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of by the prophets. He shall be called a Nazarene. Right. So now he goes to Nazareth and in Nazareth, that's their hometown. This is where the boy grew up. Right. But even like so. When they had a baby, they know that he's not a regular baby. These people in Judah, they know about him, right? But remember, that's not his hometown. He got to go back home. So he's not raised in Jerusalem where a few people know about him. He actually gets raised in Nazareth, right? Go, uh, jump over to, uh, to Luke chapter 2. Give me, uh, jump down to verse 38. This is Luke chapter 2, verse 38. So he goes back to his hometown, 
right? And now we're about to kind of see him start to kind of grow up, right? Watch this. This is Luke chapter 2, verse 38. And she coming in that instant gave thanks likewise unto Yahuwah and spake of him to all them that looked for redemption in Jerusalem. When they had performed all things according to the law of the Lord, they returned into Galilee to their own city, Nazareth. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Mm -hmm. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when so wait, he... first of all, recognize this is not a regular kid. The book say the, the child grew and grew strong in spirit and had the grace of God on him. So in other words, things just work out for the kid. You know what I'm saying? That's, look, the boy, just stuff just falls together for him somehow. You know what I'm saying? Don't know how, but the grace of God is always on him. Like, you know what I'm saying? That just happen. You know what I'm saying? It's a bus passing by. He ain't even, he just, he ain't even, he just walking by and all of a sudden the bus skirt off him and keep from hitting him. You know what I'm saying? He ain't even paying attention. He just running down the middle of the street. Everything just, everything just seems to work out for him. Right? The grace of God just sit on him and he's strong in spirit. So in other words, he got energy. Right? He's strong with the most high God. Watch this. Keep going. They go down to what? Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. And when right? the boy, a preteen, he's 12 years old. They go to Passover. He go with them. What else? When they had fulfilled the days as they returned, the child Yahushua tarried behind in Jerusalem. And Joseph right? Was, so now they fulfilled the days. So they spent they seven days out there for the Feast of Unleavened Bread. After that, they looking like, all right, it's time to go home. Right? They probably traveled with a big group of people. So they going back. They don't even realize that Yahushua ain't with them. Remember, this is date like they're back to their regular routine. He's 12 years old now. They don't remember. They not constantly thinking about this, the Messiah. This my kid. I got to get up. I got to feed you. Nothing magical is happening. It ain't like the kid is floating. It ain't like he glowing. Right. This is just my kid. I got to take care of you every single day. Got the same routine. We do this every year. It's time to go. We probably running with a big old pack. There's a whole bunch of people traveling back up north, going back to Nazareth or Galilee or whatever cities they from, and they don't even realize that they ain't got Yahushua with them, right? Then what happened? And Joseph and his mother knew not of it, but they, supposing him to have been in the company, went a day's journey, and they sought among they sought him among their kinsfolk and acquaintances. And right, they so they went a whole day's journey. In other words, at some point, they looking like, all right, Let's take a rest so we can sleep and then wake up for the next day. So now they're doing the accounting. Where y'all sure at? Have y'all seen y'all sure? I thought he was walking with y'all. He wasn't walking with y'all? What about y'all over here? Y'all, uh, go ask, go ask Zacharias if he, have you seen, you seen y'all sure with y'all sure not with y'all either? Now Mary freaking out. Where's my baby? Right? She running around the whole group. Do y'all got my sure? Everybody, where's my baby? Everybody freaking out. They looking like, Nah, I'm telling you, when we left, I saw him in. Why didn't you tell me that he was still at the temple when we left? So now Mary freaking out on everybody. Like, what in the world is happening? Right? So they had to travel all the way back to Jerusalem because they left him. Right? Watch this. And when they found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem seeking him. And it came to pass that after three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors. Both so they looking all around Jerusalem for three whole days. They looking for this boy for three days. I don't know where he is. I don't know where he is. They checking here. They checking houses. We went to this person's house. Then we go to my cousin Joseph's house. Okay, then we go to this. Then we go to that. They going all these different places, right? They can't find them. But then they finally check at the temple. And watch what happened. Both hearing them and asking them questions. And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. And right? So, y'all sure in the temple giving it to these boys. He's not just asking questions, but he's also answering questions. And they looking into him like, that's a sharp boy. That boy know his law. Right? This is not a regular kid is all I'm trying to explain to y'all. When this boy gets to, look, when he in Jerusalem, he right at home. You know what I'm saying? Nazareth, they might not know who he is. When that boy gets to Jerusalem, 
He looking like he out there with the teachers. The books say the doctors of the law. That mean they teachers. Right? They mean they got the highest understanding. And he answering questions with them and asking questions. Okay, but what about this? All right, but did you notice when, when you know what I'm saying? Ah, yeah, but in chapter 3, verse 7, you know what I'm saying? Did you realize it's that and the other? I, I understand that. Actually, you can find the answer right over here. And they're going back and forth with him. And the book say they astonished. Like, this is a sharp young man here. He know him some book. Right? Keep going. Watch this. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, son, why hast thou thus dealt with us? Behold. Right? She looking like, boy, why in the world are you still here? And you hiding out here? You've been here for four darn days and you ain't said nothing to us. Right? Keep going. Watch this. He said unto them, Wait, behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. And he said unto them, How is it that you sought me? Wish ye not that I must be about my father's business. Right? He looking like just calm, smart mouth too. Just calm. Just looking like, how are you like, how are you looking for me? You didn't realize that I'll be doing what my father need me to do. This is important, y'all, because y'all need to see his order, right? He went to the word. He went to the teachers of the law. And he started to converse with them, right? His understanding of the word is surpassing teachers of the law at 12. But that was his priority. As soon as you get me to Jerusalem, my priority is to get to the word. And he start talking to the doctors of the law, right? Moms and pops snatch them up out of there, though. Like, man, come on. Right? Watch this. Keep going. And they understood not the saying which he spake unto them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject unto them. But his mother kept all these sayings in her heart. And Yahushua increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. Right? So now... Mary, all this stuff that happened, the book says she kept it in her heart. In other words, she just she just marinating on that thing like, oh, I got a bad boy. This boy, this boy about to be something special, right? She kind of like just letting that thing sit on her like, sheesh, this is good, right? And Yahushua is saying he continued to grow and he did what? Read that last piece again. And Yahushua increased. In wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. In wisdom, he increased. In stature, he increased. And then in favor, not just with God, but also with man. People are beginning to know him, right? To know that at the very least that this guy is special. This guy is different. Even if they don't know that he's the Messiah directly, they know that this guy is special. Right? It's a different type of guy. Right? This is, this is necessary. And so his stature, in other words, his fame is starting to glow, grow at this point. Right? And it's going to eventually get to the point where he grows a following. But at this point, the book don't say nothing about that yet. Right? Next week, any questions, first of all? Next week, we going um, we gonna to go over John the Baptist, right? Because remember, Elizabeth and Zechariah, they also had a child, right? So they also had a child, John the Baptist, and he's older than Yahushua by a few months, right? So now we're going to go over John the Baptist next week, and we're going to look at kind of what role he plays with Yahushua. So John the Baptist is the first one that's out there talking about repent. You know what I'm saying? Y'all need to repent. John the Baptist get out there first and then Yahushua comes after him. Right? And we're going we gonna to kind of get into that and then get into the beginning of uh, Yahushua's gospel. Right? But this is kind of like the birth of Yahushua. You know what I'm saying? The beginning. It's the birth of the conception of John the Baptist and the birth of Yahushua. You know what I'm saying? We kind of look at those and we see all the events that surrounded it and I want y'all to see how special he was I don't want y'all to get this image in your head that he was just a nobody. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, people are people knew that he was special. If they didn't know he was the Messiah, some of them knew he was the Messiah in Jerusalem. But everybody's starting to realize, like, this is a special kid. Like, he never, he always on point. You know what I'm saying? But this is a special kid. 
a little smart mouth, but you know, when, when the moms check him, he's subject to her. He do what he's supposed to do. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, you know what I'm saying? This is this guy is special. He's different. All right? Let's see if we got a question. I won't be a fellowship tomorrow going to the picnic with the daughter and niece for their birthdays. All right, sister Pam. Let's see, he was subject to her. Yep, that's right. That was a smart answer. I wonder if Miriam jacked him up. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, you know, she might have, yeah, she might have, she might have snatched him up. She might have told, get your butt over here, boy. Talk about your darn father's busy. Get your butt over here. All right? Any questions? Johnny, Yahushua with a great one two punch. That's why he wept. Yeah, that's right. That's right. They were the start of the one two punch. All right, John set these boys up. It was cousins. When we read, when we read John, another thing y'all got to realize is John was the man. That's what we gonna catch. Like John, like Yahushua, Yahushua, like people kind of looking at him like, okay, yeah, like he might be special. Yahushua is like a maybe, like a might. John was the man. Everybody was looking like they thought John was the Messiah. We are gonna read about it next week, right? Like John was the man, like just bigger than life. Everybody. Who was somebody was following what John was talking about. So we're gonna see, you know what I'm saying? We're gonna kind of see how that leads into Yahushua. You know what I'm saying? But just imagine John cultivating this huge following for it to be tr then transferred to Yahushua. That was his job. It's like go out there, do the work, gather all the people, and then when Yahushua come, hey, all y'all, look at him. Right? So that's what we're gonna kind of get into next week and then kind of get into all the stuff that Yahushua started to do. Any other questions? Don't look like it. Let's go ahead and pray out.